your example of chess, where you know, it, it is not just an abstract idea. This is in fact what happened after after uh, the deep blue experience. People predicted this was the end of chess. This was the end of humans playing chess. That proved not to be the case. What 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 ended up happening uh, after that after that match? When I lost, and it didn't happen very often, I have to say, uh, <laughs> I was angry with myself. Though I had reasons to be angry with uh, with IBM in 1997, as I described in the book. But it's what under the bridge. So it's the. <laughs> it's not very. No, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's the the reason I was really upset because I realized that I played way below my level at that time. Today, by you know since. If you have a free chess app on your, uh, on your uh, phone, it's stronger than the blue. That's the, so that's why, and I'm not even talking about specialized programs that you can use on your laptops. They are 500 points, yellow points, stronger than Magnus Carlsen. So that's the, the machines that are totally dominant. Um, uh, and we could actually look at the games, at the quality of the games we played in 96, 97, and it's, it clearly shows that the deep blue, if again, you look objectively, probably was nearly 100 points below in strength. But as I said, it's not important whether you're stronger or weaker. It's important how you play. And I, my, my performance in the match was quite lousy. I made many mistakes. I missed many chances. And that's why I was really angry. And uh, the experiment that, that uh, uh, continued after 1997, and it took another seven or eight years to understand it was all futile, uh, but we, we had a few more matches. I played two more matches in 2003 with, with uh, uh, programs, not not matches, not as publicized as IBM match, both in New York actually, but programs was probably objectively a bit stronger. Both ended in, in a tie. But it was clear that you know, it's like writing on the wall. It was just a matter of time. So, when, so um, my immediate thoughts after the blue match was, okay, let's continue playing, but let's think about other ways of making chess relevant. And naturally, that's, that's, uh, I came up with an idea, what I call advanced chess, humans plus machines, playing other humans plus machines, uh, to find the best combination of human qualities and machines' strengths, because I, I recognize it could be quite complementary, and chess could serve as a unique field to demonstrate the ability of humans to work with the machines and to, pr to produce the best results. So we, we had many years of this, of this experiment, and we actually found some very interesting things that I think that's, may sound like a paradox, but I think it's, it's, it's a very important lesson that is being now learned by, by people doing other things, not, not just playing chess. Um, it's not about the strengths of the human player teaming up with a machine. Because as I said, today's computers are much stronger than humans. It's about actually recognizing what are these, the last uh, 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 remaining decimal points that we have to fuel. And uh, it's, it's like you know, finding the right fuel for Ferrari. Uh, because humans should get, just go over our ego, our pride, and just to recognize that many things machines do better. So that's why having the world champion, Timmy Gamble, with a machine might be counterproductive. Because typically, you know, if you are the best in the world, you try to play your own game. You don't have to. You just have to make sure that you will compensate machines' deficiency in the remaining 3 4 5%, whatever the territory is left. And that's a lesson not only for chess. It's for, for, for anything else, for medical diagnosis. If you have a machine that is making just, it's it analyzing the data, I'd rather have an experienced nurse than a top professor, just to team up. Just to make sure that, again, the, this, this last few decimal points will be, will be filled correctly without trying to compete with machines on a territory where machines, mach, mach, a, a machine is dominant. I think we should recognize that uh, AI, whatever it is, it's just not arguing about the definition, is um, just a tool very important as a breakthrough, but it's still a technology. And uh, as every technology, any breakthrough technology that had been invented in the past, it could, use, it could be used both for good and evil. By the way, it's e always easier to use it for evil. <laughs> Before you build a nuclear reactor, you start a nuclear bomb. It's just to destruct, is, is to destroy is easier than to build. Right. Um, and uh, uh, we have to, I think, walk away from this, from this false dichotomy. You know, it's the dystopian, utopian, because many, many, many debates around AI now, they just, it's, they sound like religious debates now. It's small group is just overjoyed with AI, and uh, they're talking about uh, it's a savior of mankind, and much larger group talks about the Terminator, the Matrix, and, uh, and the, uh, uh, the AI opening the gates of hell. Now, uh, 
I mean, let's, you know, let's go back to our Earth and just, you know, let's, uh, let's uh, not talk about hell and paradise and just see what this technology can do for us. And uh, I cannot accept the idea that it will amplify the best of humanity. It can also amplify the worst of humanity, right. as every technology did before. Yes, you can do many great things with this device, but it's agnostic. Financial transactions, social network, perfect things. But also, it's very good for building a sophisticated terrorist network. Right. So we just have to recognize that we are entering just a new world where very powerful technology, nuclear was also powerful, but nuclear technology is, is uh, not as cost effective. <laughs> you have to invest heavily just to yeah. build reactors. And <coughs> it's, not, it's not easy to have. By the way, you could see that it's even, even the rock nations can do it. But with AI, you're talking about moving people, maybe not even moving people, actually connecting people, and just creating something that would be so powerful as we could see now in, in, in as I mentioned, the, the social media, that could be extremely destructive. And we're talking about poisoning people's minds, yeah. not about poisoning you know, uh, the, the, uh, the water tanks or, or attacking the, the electricity grids. So um, uh, the whole idea that uh, the, uh, by, by making these technological improvements, we automatically so enhance the, uh, uh, mm, the humanity of human race, I think it just it doesn't uh, stand the, the, the test of history. Right. And we just have to recognize that it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a brand new era. And uh, all the attempts, you know, just to put regulations. As you know, we have to certify, yes, great, you will certify here. Who's going to certify it in Russia? Who's yeah. going to certify it in China? There will be so many, uh, not rogue nations, but the players that will look at AI as a great uh, opportunity. By the way, AI invented in the free world as a great opportunity to spread chaos. And, and, and to, to uh, uh, advance their clandestine agenda uh, by, by um, using AI and the brains behind AI that are restricted in the free world, but will have a total freedom in, in, in developing whatever they want in, in, uh, um, uh, in Russia, China, Iran, you name it.